All right, now let's talk about technical indicators. Now these are probably the one of the most fancy things you'll see, but they, honestly, they work sometimes, but they don't work all the times. And personally, like I always mention, you should just be using price action and market structure, uh, potentially some of these indicators to give yourself an edge and to keep yourself out of uh, messy trades in the middle of the freeway. But um, for the sake of this course, I'm gonna cover them and just tell you the ones that I use. And I use them sparingly, meaning like I don't rely on them for my trade entries all the time. I mainly just use price action. But uh, technical indicators more or less are mathematical calculations based on price and volume, also known as like uh, measuring momentum of price. So and the reason why technical indicators don't work that well is because they use hysterical historical data to predict where price may go next with a high probability. And again, we're thinking in terms of probability here as a trader. So there are two types of technical indicators. And the first one is the overlays. And this, these indicators use the same scale as price and are plotted over the top of prices on the chart. And the other, other type of technical indicators are the oscillators, which are indicators that oscillate between a local minimum and a maximum, otherwise known as zero and one or uh, could also be a negative to a positive number as well. And these are plotted below a price chart. So limitations on using technical indicators this is very important to understand. So most are lagging since calculations depend on historical data. So you might get in, by the time you get in, that your indicator is telling you to get in, it's gonna be too late, or price action could have got you in way earlier. And by the time you're getting in with a technical indicator, if you're just using price action, you might be taking profit. So it's important to know that. And like I mentioned, they're not 100% guaranteed to work. So this will probably help you a bit. So how do we use indicators for day trading at PLT? So these are our rules for using indicators. So number one, price action and market structure always take precedence over any indicator. Number two, if an indicator is signaling a reversal or continuation, price action must also confirm. In other words, holding or breaking support and resistance. Number three, keep it simple by having no more than three indicators on your chart. Less is more in this case. Number four, trend lines, fibs, and pivot points are the best indicators to use to increase your probability of winning trades. And number five, <laughs> see rules number one through four. So first, let's talk about the VWAP, which is the volume weighted average price. So the VWAP averages the closing prices during the given time period while putting emphasis on periods with higher volume. And this is a lagging indicator, but large institutions use the VWAP quite a bit to help them move into and into or out of a position. So this provides liquidity for the bigger funds to enter and exit their trades. So this is where most of the volume is happening for the day. So how to use the VWAP. So when the closing price is greater than the VWAP, it's typically bullish. And when the closing price is below the VWAP, it's typically bearish. However, price action should always prove and confirm this. And a lot of times, uh, for me, I use the VWAP usually for profit targets, not entries, since price tends to move back towards the VWAP. And you could think of the VWAP as like, a mean reversion tool as well. And it's really important to understand this and you'll see this pattern and you'll become more familiar with using the VWAP once you trade more and just get some screen time and you see how price reacts around, around this indicator. But by itself is not, is not a, a tool to, to take trades on, I would say. As I mentioned, I use this more or less only for profit targets, expecting that price is gonna eventually go back and touch it. It's almost like an average, like a moving average. So next, leading right into moving averages, we're gonna talk about simple and exponential moving averages. So SMAs, the simple moving averages, it's calculated by adding recent closing prices and dividing by the number of time periods, pretty simple. And the EMA is calculated the same as the SMA, but it is more sensitive since more weight is given to recent prices. So definitely, the EMA definitely reacts quicker than the SMA. 
that's the main difference. So, but how do we use the moving averages? So the main way that I recommend using it and the way that I've used it, and this is only on like the weekly, the daily and monthly timeframes is when the shorter moving averages are longer than the, are greater than the longer moving averages or bullish, the trend is bullish. And when the shorter moving averages are less than the longer moving averages, the trend is bearish. Unless, of course, price action proves otherwise. We're going back to using price action as our main tool here. So we always want to use, we can use these moving averages to confirm trend direction or possible entry. The one tool, one average that I use for day trading to get an idea of what the trend is for the day and how strong the trend is, is the nine day EMA on the five minute. It can really indicate a strong trend when day trading. And you'll notice this when you're day trading, getting screen time, if you have it on your chart and you're in our live trading room, you'll see that that's the only moving average I have on the five minute, just to get an indication if we're trending up, down or sideways. Fibonacci retracements, one of, the, one of my favorite analysis tools to use and what price level trading is known for, how we trade levels. And this is how we identify those high probability trading levels is one way we do it. So a Fibonacci retracement measures the distance between two extremes of price, a peak and a trough, so like a high to a low. And I call that the most recent measured move. So how do you use Fibonacci retracements? First, you want to identify the most recent measured move on a shorter time frame, like the 15 minute or the hourly for day trading. You can also use the five minute. Uh, for bigger levels, you can use the daily and weekly time frames. And if you're an investor or looking for high probability swing trades, the weekly and the daily Fibonacci retracements, even the monthly are incredible for getting you in to a trade without taking any heat sometimes, like any, without price really moving against your position is what I mean. So I do have bullish and bearish rules to the right. And of course, I always have this asterisk there where price action proves otherwise we don't follow these rules. But for bullish, typically plot from zero to 100%, that'll be the measured move and then I'll have extensions above and below the high and the low. So one third back is typically the 61.8 FIB. And that's first support slash uh, trend continuation. If we're in a strong trend, that's a good entry point. 50% uh, is a good entry also to continue trend. And then the last line in the sand that I like to call this where price must hold here is the 38.2% FIB, which is two thirds back. And the extensions actually are really good for identifying potential profit targets. So the 123.6% above and below the high and low, it could be a first target for if you're short or long and potential reversal areas. Um, same with two thirds extension above the high and low, the 161.8, and then also the 261.8. It's like uh, two standard deviations of the move. And the same thing applies to the bearish rules. Uh, you more or less are just flipping, flipping the Fibonacci's around and same rules apply there. So now let's talk about the average true range, also known as the ATR. Now this is a really important tool that helps us measure market volatility within the time frame that's being calculated. So using the ATR, we can actually determine what our suggested stop loss should be. And if you have been trading this past week with the coronavirus where the market's been dumping, the ATR in like the five minute on NQ has been insanely high, like 20, 30, 40, 50 points. I even saw like a hundred point plus five minute candle on the NQ futures. Um, so it, it can tell you really quick if this is, if this current market or this current instrument that you're looking for a trade is within your risk tolerance. And it also gives you a really good idea of how to estimate your upper and lower targets when you're in a trade that's, that's working in your favor. Um, ATR also helps you identify midpoint of a trading range. So above the midpoint is bullish and below midpoint is bearish, obviously. And I use a seven day time period for day trading to identify the ATR highs and lows and midpoints and then the ATR for the day. At least these are expected calculations. Um, they're not always correct. They're pretty accurate, but not all the time. Just like I mentioned how technical indicators are. And we have Apple here on the right hand side in this chart. 
and we can see that the calculated seven day ATR labels for the daily candles, the midpoint is 324.42. So above there is bullish, below there is bearish. Low target, if we go lower, is around 319.57. The high target is around 329.26. And the ATR expected range of the candle is $6.41. So that's the more or less the opportunity for you if you're day trading. So RSI, we're getting into the oscillators now. So this is the relative strength index, RSI. In itself, it, it's a good indicator of measuring momentum of a stock. But in itself, it doesn't work. I would say I don't actually use it to identify trades, but I'll show you how I use it with a, a moving average and another study that I developed over the years. So what is RSI? It measures the magnitude of recent price changes to evaluate overbought or oversold conditions, otherwise known as momentum. So this is just a momentum gauge. And people typically use RSI by signaling if it's above 70, we're overbought and a pullback's likely. And if our RSI is below 30, it's oversold and we're more than likely going to have a pullback. Like a uh, pullback in this case would be that we are going to bounce higher if our RSI is less than 30. Um, and as I mentioned, it should not be used by itself in day trading. Again, it is a lagging indicator and it will get you in super late to the party. And by the time you get in, the run is more than likely over. So we cannot use this in itself for day trading. Um, so what I use actually is I combine the RSI with moving averages. And I think there's an exponential moving average and an SMA simple moving averages to generate this cloud more or less to identify momentum. And I combine that with a John Carter squeeze to tell me if we're chopping around or if this move is firing out of the squeeze, I'm going to cover that in the next slide. So I know that this move that's currently happening is strong in the direction that it's moving until it shows me until price action shows me that it is not. Lastly, let's talk about the TTM squeeze also known as the John Carter study. This is Kristen's, one of Kristen's and mine's favorite study to use for identifying momentum and how long this current move is going to last on an underlying stock or futures instrument. So the squeeze more or less is a volatility based indicator that tells you when the market is switching from a trending market to oscillating and vice versa. And oscillating in this case is choppy and range bound where there's no real direction. And most of the time you don't really want to trade that. You want to wait till price fires up fires out of the squeeze because the movement's going to be strong in the direction of where that price goes. So how do you use the John, John Carter squeeze? So in think or swim, this study is called TTM squeeze. And when we're in the squeeze, you'll see a bunch of red dots on the lower indicator there. And I have it uh, in a red box there at the lower end of this uh, chart. So we have a bunch of red dots, we're in the squeeze. And when we're in the squeeze, you want to trade the range. There's no really de big defined direction of which way we're going to go. But when price fires out of the squeeze in a specific time frame, you'll see a, the red dots turn to green. And that's when momentum is strong to the direction that the price is moving until price goes back in the squeeze where the green dots turn to red. So when you see price fire out of the squeeze, you want to take the trade in the direction of the momentum for up to nine candles, typically. Um, for example, if you're trading the five minute chart, that would be 45 minutes of momentum where you could capture and lock in profits. Sometimes it's more or less, but that's a good estimate of how long uh, momentum could last out of the squeeze. And then when a price, like I mentioned, fires out of the squeeze, then goes back in the squeeze, you should probably scratch the trade because more or less it was a fake out and price isn't really going to move the direction that the indicator was actually signaling it to go. Um, and then you just kind of wait for the next trade. So it's a really solid indicator to use, I would say, on longer time frames. Uh, definitely daily, weekly, monthly, even like hourly and four hour to get bigger direction, directional moves. Uh, just add it to your toolbox. I highly recommend it. And Chris and I talk about this quite a bit. In, the live day trading room. So final thoughts and tips on using technical analysis. 
So as I mentioned, technical analysis is an amazing tool for finding high probability trading setups by giving ourselves an edge. However, it doesn't always work as expected and that's okay because we focus on defending our capital first and we got to think in terms of probabilities and protecting our capital and taking the trades that have the highest probability and chance of working out in our favor um, and are giving us a decent return on the risk we're willing to take. And we know a winner is eventually coming if we keep trading the same high probability strategies that we know work. This is super important. Um, and you have to just believe in the strategies that you're testing and you're using with live money. And you can't let your psychology get in the way of you from making money. And Chris and I already talked about this in the psychology course, or at least the lesson of this course. And I'm going to mention it again because it's super important. Technical analysis is amazing and it's great and people like to focus on it because all the fancy things it can do and the colors it adds to your charts. But in the end, a winning trader's mindset is way more important than using technical analysis. If you focus, if you understand how to do technical analysis, which is super simple, everyone knows how to do it. Some people do it a lot better than others, but the most successful traders are people that have a, a really positive and solid winning mindset you know and they don't let losing trades affect them they they stick to the long-term plan they say discipline diligent um vigilant you know they're they're just on on the ball you know they're they're doing everything they know they need to do to to make money and they're not letting themselves be their own worst enemy so focus on that but also learn technical analysis through these videos and ask us questions if you have any and Chris and I will be more than happy to, to chat with you further to clarify any concepts that you might not understand. And we're here to help you guys and see, see you become successful at trading. All right, so that wraps up lesson five on technical analysis. If you have any questions, make sure you reach out to Chris and I at contact.pressleveltrading.com. And you can also post in our private Facebook group that you're a part of and either myself, Kristen, or another community member will help you out as soon as we can, answer any questions you may, might have. And the next lesson we're gonna talk about is helping you create a detailed trading plan and entry and exit checklist. So let's dive into that.